We're going to study uh, willpower, the potent force of the universe. Uh, it's very possible that uh, people in our generation, at least, and if the others did it, they didn't give it to posterity through the printed page, uh, penetrated the will. Uh, they, they will. We have discovered it to be the potent force of the universe. If you have a, a, a James Strong concordance, one of the best of the concordances, uh, you will notice that the word will and willfully and willingly uh, take up about 12 pages of the concordance. And, and counting down the, the columns, I discovered that each page had about 300 and 60 references to a page, which is 4,320 references to will. Now, it looks to me as if God's trying to get our attention. When you have 4,320 references about any subject, it's about time to delve into the subject. We have spent considerable time in seeking God and, and thinking and praying regarding will. And we trust that you will join with us with your heart open, with your spirit open, and let's discover things about yourself and about God. Uh, these lessons will introduce to us what we believe to be the potent force of the universe that is so strong. <laughs> it is so strong. There are at least six distinct creatures in our universe who possess will or willpower. Willpower is a dominant fact regarding destiny for rational persons. You are what you are by will. You will spend eternity wherever by your will. The human will is one third of his human solical personality. God created Adam a three-dimensional person. We will discuss that in just a few moments uh, a little later. We only want you to see, you know, as we telescope in, we just want, to, want you to see where we're reaching to. You're a spirit and a soul and a body. We're reaching into the dimension of soul. The soul has its three dimensions. We're reaching into just one dimension of your solical parts. As human persons, we should and we must know what willpower is, where it generates from, what causes it to function, and, and, and what will it do for you and for me. We must learn to control willpower, which I would say not too many people understand it enough to know when they're controlled or not being controlled. Now, that's ignorance. And, and God wants us to understand the force of willpower, to identify it as it functions, and to see whether it comes from one of three sources, divine, human, or demonic. And, and then he wants us to know by di divine decree that you and I can be victorious in every department of our created being. So we can be motivated by willpower from divine power, a human power, or, or, or demonic power. In these lessons, we will, we will observe that God, the creator of all things, possesses and has willpower. That he is the originator of willpower. And so when we find out what willpower is in God, then we can come down and see what willpower happens to be in you. We shall observe that Jesus Christ, declared to be God's only begotten Son, that he possessed tremendous willpower. He functioned in willpower. And if we see this, then we can say the willpower that was in the Lord Jesus Christ can function in my life. And so you, you'll be able to coordinate the truth of willpower by, seeing, by observing it first in God the Father and then in God the Son. We will also uh, seek to uh, penetrate in the third entity of the Holy Trinity, who is called the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, that he exerts amazing and mighty willpower. So we will study willpower as functioning in this third person of the divine trinity and how it can flow through to us. 
guide our lives, strengthen our lives, motivate our lives. It'll be most exciting, I can assure you. And then we will also study other rational creatures, such as the entities called angels, uh, heavenly persons and heavenly beings, that they possess willpower. Now, this is going to be amazing to you when we start describing willpower, that angels have it the same as God has it, same as Christ has it, or the Holy Spirit has it. And that the entities called angels do not, ob they obey God by option. They don't have to obey God. They will to obey God. That's going to be a whole lesson, so I, I'm sure you'll want to get in on that one. And so they are not slaves. They, they, are, without, they, they are not without opinion, and they're not without decision, and that their will functions, that every time God speaks, they exert willpower. And, and so it's a controlling force. As I said, it's the potent force of the universe. God created it. God made it. What is it? <laughs> that's, what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna seek to know. Now, on the negative side, if we can move away from angels here, on the negative side, all demons have willpower, and the devil himself, he has willpower, and they use this power. Now, they use their willpower, usually and normally, to combat the purposes of God in the universe. <laughs> Their business is to fight God. And so they, they use their willpower combating the most holy and the most high. And uh, when you see this willpower in such a, a panoramic view from God the Father even to Satan and all between, then you'll say, well, why didn't I know that before? You cannot live a victorious Christian life without having some recognition that deep down within you are forces that really make you. And those forces, of course, belonging to God, put you in the right road. And those forces dominated by the devil will put you in the wrong road. So let's, let's go into them. Man, the homo sapien that God created and placed upon planet Earth, who is also the apex of all of God's creation, that he was invested with sovereign willpower. That's very strong. He was invested with sovereign willpower. This investment and this power that was granted unto man by divine prerogative, God said, I will create this person and call him man. I will give him willpower. <laughs> and, and, and in doing so, God made him a creature of volition. He made him a creature of judgment. He made him a creature of understanding. He made him a creature of decision. You do not have to go straight ahead. You can go backwards if you want to. You do not have to turn to the right. You can go to the left if you want to. God placed within you the amazing volitional strengths and anointings and powers of what we call will. Now, when God granted you this, he determined that he would never violate it. You know, sometimes you say, why doesn't God stop Adolf Hitler? Why doesn't God stop Stalin? Why doesn't God stop Castro? Why doesn't God stop this and that and the other? God has granted us with decision power. He has granted us with, with willpower, and God will not violate it. He'll let you eventually be lost if you want to be. You know, if you, if you desire to be, uh, God will eventually permit you to do that. God will not violate man's willpower. Now, one of the strongest statements, and I'm going to get to it in a, in a special lesson in this series. The devil cannot violate it. Now, I've talked to some of the most extreme cases of demon possession on the face of the earth, and every one of them tells me that they did not have to obey the devil. They did as they pleased. <laughs> they exerted willpower. <clears throat> then you and I are going to do some real studying in what is willpower and how you and I can use willpower. Before we get into it it's too strong, <clears throat> there are those that have no will. For example, a, an idiot, a person without a mind, a person of insanity, he has no will. He or she are not responsible for their destiny. Did you get that? And I, I believe 
God is a good God and that they're all saved. I don't believe anybody can go to hell without rebellion. Yeah, he just says God would have known there'd have been rebellion if that ahead of might. No, God doesn't judge you on those bases. God only judges you on what you do, you see. And if they have not rebelled, then they have not rebelled. So, we'll say an idiot has no will. And so he doesn't know what we're talking about. A, a person who totally loses his ability to conclude anything or to decide anything or, or to will anything is not a person reliable for his own destiny. So that's where the glorious God, the, the mighty Savior, the loving Father comes in and says, well, you're not under this thing called willpower. Now, the, the will of an animal is subject to its master, always. It has no free will. So that creature does not come under this either. The animal has no free will. The bits in the mouth of a horse make him to be a servant of the rider upon his back. If that rider wants to go north, that horse goes north. He pulls him around. The horse may say, the barn where I wish to stay is south. The rider says, north. The horse has no option. He has no will of his own. He has to obey the rider. The human has no such thing. The human doesn't even have God Almighty <laughs> sitting on his back with bits in his mouth. No. And the devil can't get bits in your mouth. You are a free will person. Catch the word will. And you willfully do as you please. Catch the word will. We're going to go deeply into this. I want you to pray as you go with me because I want you to absorb it and I want it to change your life and I want, it, want you to share it with others. Now, a dog has to be obedient to its master. He has no option or will or the master will beat him to the floor, you see. When, when, when he says, he's got to hear him. When he says, he's got to hear him. And, and, and if he doesn't obey the will of the master, the master beats him into the floor or kills him. So the animal has no situation in which we're seeking, seeking to teach about at this present time. With sufficient willpower, determined against your mind, most persons can be hypnotized. But it is the giving over of the will that permits you to be hypnotized. If a person resists the hypnotist by his will, his resolve, which sends a message up to the mind or to the brain saying, I resist this person seeking to take my mind over and to hypnotize me. That person cannot be hypnotized. The mind obeys the will. Now that's where we, 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 we seek to, uh, to determine the greatness of the will and then it can tell the mind. <laughs> then, then, then you see it supersedes the mind. The will must first be broken down. Will you do it? Will you do it? Will you do it? Before the other parts of your being will coordinate with it and say, yes, we will go along with that. The power of free will is the most precious gift from God, our Creator. And in being such a magnificent gift, you and I should study, we should learn how to control it, we should determine how to make it a positive force for God and the earth in which we live. The, the will. We don't want to say human will because there are at least six groups of entities that possess will. So we are only going to say will, which is the potent power of the universe. <laughs> you cannot weigh the will. The will cannot be weighed in scales. And so you have to leave off that abilities to it. You cannot measure the will. Is it two inches long or four inches long? You cannot measure the will. Will is different from your corporate person that we can see, such as your eyes, uh, your hands, your feet. These can be seen, they can be felt, and they can be heard. But your will goes back behind that area of your total personality. It is a strong thing that governs. It governs your hands and your feet and your seeing and your hearing and so forth. 
Now, as we mentioned a moment ago, man is blessed by his creator as possessing a threefold personality. Now, we have a lot of lessons on this, and we'd like for you to study them. Uh, they are called the total man, where we study the spirit, the soul, and the body. So we're not studying, studying the soul as the soul. We're studying a portion called will within, within the area of soul. The will is a third part of your solical being. Your solical being is your mind, your emotions, and your will. And we have decided to penetrate will to see how great it is and how, how marvelous it is. <laughs> And you could go and say how treacherous it is that it can destroy you and, and uh, how polluted it can become by being broken down with alcohol or, or drugs or so forth to where you could not exercise it as God created it for you. It is to be a protected part of your personality. When man is using or operating in his solical parts, uh, he is using his mind or he is using his emotions, or he is using his will. That's in his Adamic nature, and that is in his solical being. He can be using two parts, or even three parts of his soul at the same time. For example, he can be using his mind and his will functioning simultaneously. He can will to do something, conveys it to the mind, the mind carries it out, you see. And it can be something of a fantastic nature, and the emotions would jump in and say, hi, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. Then he'd have all three portions of his solical person functioning at that time. When man is not functioning by his mind, or if he is not functioning by his emotions, for sure he is operating in the area of his will. He wills to do a certain thing. So his will is an action at that point, determining what he will be in, uh, the, uh, on all the total parts of his total personality. The will can be moved and activated by three elements, really, by spiritual power, which is divine, or by human power, uh, which is the earth around about us, and, the, uh, and the, the beautiful things of the earth are things that are not beautiful too, a human power, or by, or by demonic power. So the will of man can be motivated by God. It can be motivated by man himself. It can be motivated by satanic forces. And, and so there are, those are the three areas that can move in against the will to cause it to function in the ways that it does function. Now to analyze the will, we must observe that it is a power. It is a power manifested by, by intelligence. Without intelligence, there is no will. So it is, manif it is manifested by, by intelligence, uh, whether, it, whether it is in deity, or whether it is in angels, whether it is in mankind, whether it is in devils. Will is functioned and operated by intelligence. Without intelligence, there is no will. So intelligence and will function together. Uh, the will cannot function where there is not present a thing called, uh, called intelligence. Now, how can the will be motivated? I want you just to go down deeper and deeper uh, with me into this now. How can the will be motivated? Uh, there are several sources by, by which the will can be influenced and it can be motivated. For example, uh, to, to will is also to, to wish, to, to wish. The human will, will reaches out to receive something or to change something by wishing for a difference. So the will comes into being by a wish. You can say, I wish to be in another city, you see? And something within you says, yes, and I will go. And in your will portions, it says, I am going to that city. And in so doing, <laughs> in, in, in so doing, Everything begins to function. The mind says, I know where it is and I know how to get there. Your emotion says, and I'll be very happy to be there. And your body says, I'll cooperate. I'll use my legs, I'll use my feet, I'll use my hands, I'll use my eyes, I'll use my ears. And so you find your, your total being moving and functioning because of a wish that came up out 
of the will. So to wish is to will, and to will is to wish. All right? To will also is to choose. You can choose to become a doctor and be trained to be a doctor. You can choose to become a lawyer. Now, now many times a person chooses to become a doctor and his other faculties don't measure up. He doesn't have the proper IQ and the proper abilities to be a doctor. And so his will is frustrated in that it says, I wish, see there's will, I wish to be a doctor, but he says, I don't have the IQ to be a doctor. So the universities will not give me the training uh, that I want. Or you can say, I will to be a lawyer. And that will within you turns your mind into the areas of law and, and, and legal powers to learn and to know and to understand, uh, you see. And uh, or you can, uh, your will can say, I will be a minister. Now, you see, here you've got a, a remarkable thing, because a minister is a divine calling. And so that means that the will of God moves in on the will of man. Get it? And the will of man says, I wish to choose to be a minister of the gospel. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Your hands didn't choose it. Your brain didn't choose it. But your will within you says, I wish which is will, I choose, which is will, to be a minister of the gospel. And that willpower begins to rise up from your inner persons, from the inside of you. It flows to the brain. And, and first, in the matter of the ministry, it comes out of the spirit. Now, in being a lawyer or, or a doctor or a farmer or, or whatever, it could come up out of the solical parts, out of the mind to the will. But uh, here, uh, to be a, a divine minister, uh, to be a called minister, like when Peter, James, and John were called by Jesus, in the, it all began in the will of Jesus. It didn't begin in them. It began in the will of Jesus, and His will communicated with their will and says, will you be a disciple of mine? They said, I will. <laughs> will. We're teaching you what will is. We don't ever want you to lose it. We want to show you the intricacies of your person that is within you that God uses and that God wants you to understand in order to have a fulfilled life, in order to have a victorious life, in order to be all that God wants you to be. He, he wants you to have them also. All right. What is will? A will is a wish. Will is to choose. And also, will is relating to willingness. Willingness or an assent to perform or give. Now, if you don't will to do a thing, you become unwilling. That means your will goes into reverse. So what is will? Will is relating to willingness. God says uh, to me, for example, says, will you go to Manila, Philippines and be, and be a missionary? I said, I will. I didn't say, I think, I feel. No. <laughs> I said, I will. And so God's will and my will got together and we took our family to the Philippines. God gave us the greatest revival we've ever seen in our lives. We saw 150,000 people saved at, at one time. And so we saw the, the, the finished product of the will of God in a human will uh, moving out in willingness. I said, yes, Lord, I am willing to leave my country. I am willing to leave uh, the luxuries that, that I enjoy here. I, 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 am, I am willing to go to torrid heat. Uh, Manila has never seen a cold day in history. I, I said, I am willing. So what is will? Will is related to willingness. Willingness is an ascent, agreeing, agreeing uh, to perform or to give. You see, if God says, give me a thousand dollars, he speaks that to your will. <laughs> he speaks that to your will and says, will you give $1,000? So inside of you, your will responds to God and says, yes, I will, you see. And then we find that will is a related situation to consent, saying, yes, I consent to that, to agree to a condition or a proposition, or we can either disagree with it. So you've got willing and unwilling, you know, the two areas. 
And, and so we would like for you to, uh, to, to, to let this thing get down deep inside, if you please. Now, I, I, we've gone just about far enough for, you know, for one sitting. <laughs> I want you to pray over this. And, and to remember, the Lord Jesus said that when you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy will. Isn't it amazing how we run over that word, poop? Thy will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven.